We're going to use a spreadsheet today to analyze your lab data. You should already have looked at carbon, silicon, tin, and lead, recorded the mass of each sample, as well as the initial and final volumes in preparation of doing a density calculation. Go ahead and organize a data table where we have the atomic number, the number of protons in column A, the mass in grams in column B, the initial volume in column C, and the final volume in column D. Um, I do like to put those headings with the units uh, in that first row. And I noticed that when I typed in 50.0 uh, for uh, the vo initial volume here for silicon, that the spreadsheet just automatically left it at 50. If I want to uh, force that to have the right number of decimal places, I'm going to click on that box. And in my menu choices, I have a decrease and increase decimal places. I want to make sure that if I read that graduated cylinder to the nearest tenth of a milliliter, then I get that properly recorded when I am showing that data to people. All right. All right, with this information in place, to find the final volume, I just need to subtract the, uh, the final minus the initial to get the overall volume of the sample. To let the spreadsheet do the calculation for you, start in your box with an equal sign. This just indicates to the spreadsheet that this is going to be a mathematical function. I'm going to click on the D2 box for the final volume, hit the minus symbol, and then click on the C2 box for the initial volume. That should automatically do the subtraction for me, and the difference is 20.1 milliliters. Now the beauty of the spreadsheet, once you have done the calculation once, you can repeat that calculation for all the other rows by clicking on that formula, clicking on the blue square, and dragging that down. This is called a smart fill. And it's going to automatically grab the right numbers from the row for the calculation as you go. All right, so my volumes, I had a large volume for, for carbon, uh, and the rest of the volumes were a bit smaller. We're going to do the same logic for density. Again, an equal sign to indicate to the spreadsheet this is going to be a mathematical calculation. Uh, density is mass. I'm going to click on the B2 square where the mass is stored. Hit the slash for divide, and then it's divided by the overall volume. That's going to be in the E2 square. Hit enter, and then there's the density. And the spreadsheet wants to give me all the decimal places a calculator would. We'll clean that up here in a minute. All right, click on that formula. Drag down so it applies to all the other rows. And then there's all our densities. While that is highlighted, I'm going to decrease the decimal places. Uh, there is no way that I, I know the density to that level of precision, that many decimal places, um, since my I only know my volumes and my masses to much less. So we will click that back a little. That looks better. Uh, we're not exactly following significant figure rules at this point in time. It's not something our class has discussed fully. We'll get into that later on in the course. All right, once you have the, uh, the density, we are ready to create the graph. They're asking us to graph atomic number on the x-axis, so I'm going to click on this A column, and density on the Y. So while I hold down the Control button, I'm going to click on the F. So hold down Control, click on the F. Now only the A and the F are highlighted. Come up to Insert, Chart, and it looks like the uh, spreadsheet has selected a bar graph for us, thinking that might be a great representation of this data. That is not what we're looking for, however. So under Chart Type, I am going to select Scatter. Ooh, that looks much better. All right. So far, all we have are numbers over here, no labels. We'll have to take care of all of that uh, in the customization. Sometimes when people uh, set up these spreadsheets, use column A as labels. It's not automatically highlighted. If that is not, you're going to get like two sets of dots in there. Uh, again, that's at the bottom of the setup. Make sure use column A as labels is, uh, is set up. All right. Under Customize, Chart Axis and Titles. All right, chart title, something like... 
density of group 14 elements. Makes a lot of sense. And this is a little hidden. You have a drop down box where it says chart title. And you can go to the horizontal axis. And we can actually type in stuff for that. This is going to be atomic number. And the unit, I suppose, is number of protons. Not really a unit, more of an explanation here. Uh, notice that as we type that, it does show up right on the graph. Ooh, I forgot a space. There we go. And I can uh, go to the vertical axis, do the same thing. And this was density. And I do want to include the unit so people know what this is scale to. This is grams slash milliliters. All right. Okay, once we have everything labeled, we'll shrink this menu down. When we go to series, under series, I have the option of adding a trend line. If I click on that, it naturally assumes it's going to be linear, although there are other options. Uh, but linear is what we're looking for, a straight line. That really approximates the data pretty well. And those dots are right on that line. That is fantastic. Here's a bonus feature. Under label, where it says none, you can click use equation. And that actually shows the mathematics of this line. So you don't have to calculate slope and y-intercept yourself. y equals mx plus b. Uh, the slope here is 0.118. And the y-intercept is positive 0.823. That might come in handy as we extrapolate and interpolate on our graph. All right, one more piece on here. They are going to ask me to eventually extrapolate and look at an atomic number of 114. But right now my graph ends at 80. So if I go to the horizontal axis, where it says maximum value, let me force that to be a little bit bigger. Let me go to 120. All right. That's better. I can find 114 in there. Ooh, when I do that, though, it looks like it's going to be right off the graph. So let me uh, also come to the vertical axis. All right, I need a better maximum value than that than 12. Uh, let's see, will 15 catch it? Yeah, all right. 15 will catch it. All right. Uh, if I'm going to be interpreting this graph in more detail, I might want some more lines in between. All right, let's see if we make this more readable then. Right, let's shrink down this label. Uh, grid lines and ticks. All right, maybe show some minor grid lines going across. And some minor grid lines going the other way. Ticks. Vertical, there we go. Horizontal. Oh yeah, that's gonna make that much more readable. All right, so there's your graph. You can go back and analyze that. Uh, your data might be slightly different from my data, so your line might be slightly different than mine, but it's gonna be similar to what we have here. Uh, hope that helps. Using spreadsheets is an incredibly powerful tool for doing repetitive calculations. Uh, I was known in high school to do algebra homework in spreadsheets because I couldn't stand doing the same kind of problem over and over again when the computer could do it for you. I'd rather program than, uh, than sit there and hit the calculator a bunch of times. So powerful tool. Hope you guys learn how to use that well, and we'll take advantage of that in other labs this year too.